Part 1 Listen and look. There is one example. Look, Mr Swan. This is a picture that I took when I went for a holiday in the mountains in December. There's my brother, Richard. Which one's he? The boy who's got the strange hat on. It looks like a tail. He's fallen over. I see. Was he OK? Oh, yes. Can you see the line? This is an example. Now you listen and draw lines. Who are the two boys who are making the snowman? I only know one of them, Robert. He's got an arm for the snowman in his hand. Is he someone in your family too? No. I met him there. He stayed at the same hotel. Is that a lake on the right of the picture? Yes. And there's my older sister, Katie. But isn't that a boy? Yes, but look. The girl who's just standing on the ice. That's my sister. She isn't moving in this picture. Oh, I see now. And who's that? The person with the skis? The woman who's lost her glasses? Not her. The man who's just put his skis in the snow. Oh, you mean Michael. He's a friend of my dad's. He came with us. Oh. What a lot of snow. Yes. I had lots of fun there. We all did. Can you see the woman who's pulling the sledge? That's my mother. She's got blonde hair. I see. What's her name? I call her Mum. <laughs> but her first name's Betty. And who's the person who's skiing down the mountain? The one with the green gloves? That's Harry. He's another friend of ours. Does he like going very fast? Yes, but he's not always very careful. He broke his arm last winter. Oh dear. Now listen to part one again. Who are the two boys who are making the snowman? I only know one of them, Robert. He's got an arm for the snowman in his hand. Is he someone in your family too? No. I met him there. He stayed at the same hotel. Is that a lake on the right of the picture? Yes. And there's my older sister, Katie. But isn't that a boy? Yes, but look. The girl who's just standing on the ice. That's my sister. She isn't moving in this picture. Oh, I see now. And who's that? The person with the skis? The woman who's lost her glasses. Not her. The man who's just put his skis in the snow. Oh, you mean Michael. He's a friend of my dad's. He came with us. Oh. What a lot of snow. Yes. I had lots of fun there. We all did. Can you see the woman who's pulling the sledge? That's my mother. She's got blonde hair. I see. What's her name? I call her Mum. <laughs> but her first name's Betty. And who's the person who's skiing down the mountain? The one with the green gloves? That's Harry. He's another friend of ours. Does he like going very fast? Yes, but he's not always very careful. He broke his arm last winter. Oh dear. That is the end of part one. Part two. Listen and look. There is one example. 
Good morning, children. We're going to visit a museum next week. Do you remember? You need to tell your parents about it, so listen carefully. Are we going to go there on the train, Miss Fish? Yes, that's right, David. We'll all walk to the station from the school together that morning. Great! It's going to be an exciting day. Can you see the answer? Now you listen and write. What time will we leave school, Miss Fish? We have to leave here at eight o'clock. Sorry, I know it's early, but we'll have more time at the museum if we leave then. Does it take a long time to get there? Yes, but the museum is very good. You'll see. What's the name of the museum, Miss Fish? It's called the Harding Museum. Write that down, please. Is that H A R D I? N G. Yes, that's the right way to spell it. And what will we see there? Will it be paintings like last time? No, we're going to learn about insects at the museum. We're going to look at some, draw some, and find out a lot of things about them. It will be very interesting for you. Wow, it sounds excellent. Can we buy our lunch there too? No, there's no cafe there, so this is important. You must all bring a snack with you to eat at midday. Don't forget. Okay. And what must we wear that day? Can we wear jeans? No, you're not in school that day, but you must still wear your uniform. Oh. You're going to have a very good day there, David. Don't forget to tell your parents all about it, children. Now open your math books, please. We've got lots of work to do this morning. Now listen to part two again. What time will we leave school, Miss Fish? We have to leave here at eight o'clock. Sorry, I know it's early, but we'll have more time at the museum if we leave then. Does it take a long time to get there? Yes, but the museum is very good. You'll see. What's the name of the museum, Miss Fish? It's called the Harding Museum. Write that down, please. Is that H A R D I N G? Yes, that's the right way to spell it. And what will we see there? Will it be paintings? Like last time? No, we're going to learn about insects at the museum. We're going to look at some, draw some, and find out a lot of things about them. It will be very interesting for you. Wow, it sounds excellent. Can we buy our lunch there too? No, there's no cafe there, so this is important. You must all bring a snack with you to eat at midday. Don't forget. Okay. And what must we wear that day? Can we wear jeans? No, you're not in school that day, but you must still wear your uniform. Oh. You're going to have a very good day there, David. Don't forget to tell your parents all about it, children. Now open your math books, please. We've got lots of work to do this morning. That is the end of part two. Part three. Listen and look. There is one example. Emma has a lot of things in her treasure box. Where did she find each thing? Emma. Look at this box. It's full of things. You don't need all these. I do, Dad. They're all important. Look, here's a ticket. I found it on a bus about a year ago. It's interesting because it's a different color and it's from a different town. Can you see the letter B? Now you listen and write a letter in each box.
But why do you want these things? I don't know. I just do. Look, this is good too. It's a butterfly. Mom saw it on a strange plant in a forest and took a picture of it 30 years ago on holiday. I found it in her old suitcase. And what's this? Oh, that? It's an old leaf. It's a great color, isn't it? Grandma gave me that last summer. It was in a picture on her wall in the flat. She didn't like it, but I did, so she took it out and gave it to me. And this stamp is one of my favorite things. It's a hundred years old, Grandpa said. Look, it's red and it's got a queen's face on it. Grandpa and I found it inside the pages of a book. He gave it to me. He said I must be very careful with it. Let me look at it. Oh, yes, it is old. And whose is that? This little silver pen. Don't you remember? When we put Uncle Tom's tent up in the garden, we found it inside. You telephoned him about it. He said I can have it. It doesn't write, but I like it. And this? That's an old video. It's about finding a toy bear in a cupboard. But we don't play them now, do we? We only have DVDs. But in the future, someone will be very interested in this. It was on that high old shelf in the basement. I'm going to look after it. Then my children can take it to their history lessons. Now listen to part three again. But why do you want these things? I don't know. I just do. Look, this is good too. It's a butterfly. Mom saw it on a strange plant in a forest and took a picture of it 30 years ago on holiday. I found it in her old suitcase. And what's this? Oh, that? It's an old leaf. It's a great color, isn't it? Grandma gave me that last summer. It was in a picture on her wall in the flat. She didn't like it, but I did, so she took it out and gave it to me. And this stamp is one of my favorite things. It's a hundred years old, Grandpa said. Look, it's red and it's got a queen's face on it. Grandpa and I found it inside the pages of a book. He gave it to me. He said I must be very careful with it. Let me look at it. Oh, yes, it is old. And whose is that? This little silver pen. Don't you remember? When we put Uncle Tom's tent up in the garden, we found it inside. You telephoned him about it. He said I can have it. It doesn't write, but I like it. And this? That's an old video. It's about finding a toy bear in a cupboard. But we don't play them now, do we? We only have DVDs. But in the future, someone will be very interested in this. It was on that high old shelf in the basement. I'm going to look after it. Then my children can take it to their history lessons. That is the end of part three. Part four. Listen and look. There is one example. What is Jack looking at on the computer now? Jack, are you using the computer again? Are you playing games? I am using the computer, Mum, but I'm reading some emails from my friends. Well, be quick, because I want to find a map of London. Jack? Yes, Mum. Can you see the tick? Now you listen and tick the box. One. Why does the family want to go to London? Can I go to London with you? Well, yes, of course. Why do you want to go there? To see your friends again? No, I want to go to the theatre with Dad on his birthday. It's a secret. You mustn't tell him. Great. 
can we go to a restaurant there too? We won't have enough money for that, Jack. Two. What will Jack and his mother buy? Have you bought Dad a present yet? No, but I need to use the computer for that too. Shall we buy him a nice book? He's got a lot of books already. Let's get him a DVD. You can buy those on the computer. Good idea. Or some golf balls. No, Mum. He likes watching films more than playing golf. <laughs> okay. Three. What must Jack find out about on the computer? I need to find out about something on the computer too later. It's for my homework. About the artist, the one that your teacher told you about. No, we did that last week. I need to know more about an important photographer. We looked at some of his pictures yesterday in art at school. Okay. I'll help you with that, and I want to find out about that famous singer, the one I heard on the radio yesterday. Perhaps you can buy one of his CDs too. Perhaps. Four. What can Jack's best friend do well on his computer? You know my best friend at school, the one who's very good on the computer. Yes, can he write very fast when he uses one? No, but he can draw really well on it. He's excellent at that. I want to learn too. Well, he can give you lessons then. My friend at work writes music on hers. She's very good at that. Five. What's wrong with the computer now? I've only got three emails now. Oh, Mum, the computer stopped working. What's the matter with it? Has it got lots of lines on it or spots again? No, it's all black. What shall I do? Wait a minute. I'll come and look at it. Ah,、oh, computers. Sometimes I love them and sometimes I hate them. <laughs> Now listen to part four again. One. Why does the family want to go to London? Can I go to London with you? Well, yes, of course. Why do you want to go there? To see your friends again? No, I want to go to the theatre with Dad on his birthday. It's a secret. You mustn't tell him. Great. Can we go to a restaurant there too? We won't have enough money for that, Jack. Two. What will Jack and his mother buy? Have you bought Dad a present yet? No, but I need to use the computer for that too. Shall we buy him a nice book? He's got a lot of books already. Let's get him a DVD. You can buy those on the computer. Good idea. Or some golf balls. No, Mum. He likes watching films more than playing golf. <laughs> okay. Three. What must Jack find out about on the computer? I need to find out about something on the computer too later. It's for my homework. About the artist, the one that your teacher told you about. No, we did that last week. I need to know more about an important photographer. We looked at some of his pictures yesterday in art at school. Okay, I'll help you with that. And I want to find out about that famous singer, the one I heard on the radio yesterday. Perhaps you can buy one of his CDs too. Perhaps. Four. What can Jack's best friend do well on his computer? You know my best friend at school, the one who's very good on the computer. Yes. Can he write very fast when he uses one? No, but he can draw really well on it. He's excellent at that. I want to learn too. Well, he can give you lessons then. 
My friend at work writes music on hers. She's very good at that. Five. What's wrong with the computer now? I've only got three emails now. Oh, Mum, the computer stopped working. What's the matter with it? Has it got lots of lines on it or spots again? No, it's all black. What shall I do? Wait a minute. I'll come and look at it. Oh, computers. Sometimes I love them and sometimes I hate them. <laughs> That is the end of part four. Part five. Listen and look at the picture. There is one example. Shall we colour some of this picture now? Yes, it's funny. Some astronauts are on the moon. That's right. Can you see the astronaut who's cooking something on the fire? Yes. Can I colour his space trousers? Yes, OK. Colour them orange. Can you see the orange trousers? This is an example. Now you listen and colour and write and draw. One. What else can I colour? One of the flags? Yes, good idea. Colour the one which is next to the man with the camera. OK. And can I choose the colour this time? Yes, all right. I'll use green then. OK. Two. There are some planets in the sky. Yes, there are. Colour the one next to the star. No, sorry, colour the one that's got a kind of ring. Which colour must I use? Let's colour it yellow. Do you agree? Yes, that's my favourite colour. Three. And can I draw something on this picture too? Yes. Draw a plate on the ground between the two rocks. Can you do that? Yes. I'll draw a small round one. Shall I colour it too? Yes, please. Make it blue. All right. I'll do that now. Good. Four. Would you like to write something in this picture too? Oh yes, I like writing. What can I write? The rocket hasn't got a name. We must give it one. OK. What name shall we write on it? Write wings on it. That's a great name for a rocket. Write it in the stripe. All right, I'll do that now. Five. We should colour one more thing now. How about the strange bird in the cage? All right. Did it come with the astronauts? Yes, it came with them from our world. Make it red. Can I colour it brown? That's a better colour, I think. Yes, that's fine. I've finished now. Well done. Now listen to part five again. 
One. What else can I colour? One of the flags? Yes, good idea. Colour the one which is next to the man with the camera. OK. And can I choose the colour this time? Yes, all right. I'll use green then. OK. Two. There are some planets in the sky. Yes, there are. Colour the one next to the star. No, sorry, colour the one that's got a kind of ring. Which colour must I use? Let's colour it yellow. Do you agree? Yes, that's my favourite colour. Three. And can I draw something on this picture too? Yes. Draw a plate on the ground between the two rocks. Can you do that? Yes. I'll draw a small round one. Shall I colour it too? Yes, please. Make it blue. All right. I'll do that now. Good. Four. Would you like to write something in this picture too? Oh, yes. I like writing. What can I write? The rocket hasn't got a name. We must give it one. OK. What name shall we write on it? Write wings on it. That's a great name for a rocket. Write it in the stripe. All right. I'll do that now. Five. We should colour one more thing now. How about the strange bird in the cage? All right. Did it come with the astronauts? Yes, it came with them from our world. Make it red. Can I colour it brown? That's a better colour, I think. Yes, that's fine. I've finished now. Well done. That is the end of the Flyers' Practice Listening Test 2.